Ladies and gentlemen, it's Reeves and Mortimer. So true, funny how it seems <laughs> Never in life, but always around the dream <laughs> Did you do it and all night long? What is the sound of my soul? This is the sound taken from the Little pot cow. And uh, thank you very much for that lovely entrance. Always pop your microphones in the bucket of domestos. You never know who's going to use them next. No, you don't. Get them nice and clean. Then. Keep them clean and mean and keep them clean. I'm just fighting on rock. Best middle of the day. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Well, that was a great song. I enjoyed that. Did you enjoy that? I did enjoy it. I'm sure everyone enjoyed it. Now then, yes, we didn't get uh, all the words right in that, but um, we had a little bet, didn't we? We did. We agreed beforehand that whoever remembered the most words would receive a little trophy from the other. <laughs> to adjudicate the singing, we had Michael Jackson's son. Who was watching there? He was watching to see who remembered the most words. <laughs> there it comes on with Daddy's trapeze. Run that bed and head full of cheese. <laughs> right, uh, who remembered the most words? Mr. Mortimer with a 63% lyric recollection factor. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Sherry. you very much. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Let's have a trophy then, Rick. What? No, no, thank you. Let's have a trophy then. Um, trophy, 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 trophy. No, but give us a trophy. I want me trophy. Please. I want me trophy. I know you want a trophy. Give us me trophy. I know you want a trophy. What? Don't turn into a crab. Don't turn into a crab. Don't turn into a crab. Don't turn into Louisiana, August 1995, and four of Britain's top celebrities have been kidnapped. What happened that day has never previously been considered funny enough to broadcast until now. Oh. Jimmy Nail, Mr. Fancy Guy from Changing Rooms, Mr. Mark Reed, and Mrs. Pat Butcher. And Fancy Guy, you kiss Jimmy Nail on the nose there and tell him you love him. Kiss him, boy. Oh. You dip me up the door now, you know. I've dipped everything dip up, he says, like, God damn. Woohoo! You two gonna be brothers, you gonna be good buddies. Now, I guess you wonder why I brought y'all here tonight. A kidnap! Be kidnapping that leg! Take it easy, Jimmy. I'm dealing with this. Frank. Pete! This guy's serious. Shut up! Shut up, man! God damn! I hate that boom! That damn corn cop pain! The reason I brought you here is because I ain't got no family. This guy's mad, mate. Shut it, Frank. Oh, my sweet lord, I've got no idea. Film commitments and that, you know, I've eaten all that man got to do publicity and that, how are you? Give me a knife. Lord, have mercy. I've got boom, weapon rat and hunting paraphernalia. Goddamn, Ruth, get out of here. Start boom. I was losing it big time, Pat. Frank. I can't wait much longer. I'm going to have to do it now. Mr. Flouncy Changing Room Guy, you're gonna be my best friend and help me do it my apartment a little. Mm, that's a challenge. Um, how about a Moroccan atmosphere? How about something completely different? How about we knock this wall down here? We're gonna kind of archway. Kind of... I'd like to see a dad out here, like, you know. Yeah, I bet it's nice. <laughs> a couple of pokes. Shut up! God damn! Mm. Uh, 
make a goose of summons. Leave it, Frank. <laughs> Imagine a time when squirrels had little curly perms and moustaches. <laughs> what a waste of time that would be, Bob. I'm sorry, but I didn't hear a word of that. I was trying to get into this rock using the spud for extra leverage. And did it work? <laughs> did it work? It wasn't far off! Oh, but it's got a lot of slaver on the end of it, and that's what counts. Hold on a minute, you've got a trash. What? You've got a moustache. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. I can see it. I haven't. I can see it with my ass. <laughs> What on your mouth? Oh, it's a mouth. <laughs> Did you like it? I'll tell you what, it didn't look very good as a tash. Did it? You should capture it and use it as a tash. Shall I put it back on? I think you should, yeah, it looks right. good. It there does. You are. <coughs> <coughs> What's that? It's gone into my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my skull. God, ah, I can, I can hear it. No, I can hear it. Can you? Listen. <laughs> It's in there. It's in there. It won't come out. Hey, well, I'll try. Give us a mop. Give us a mop. I'll try. Put one of these mops in your head. You'll find out what it feels like. Give me one. Give me one. There's nothing you can do about it. What are you going to do with that? Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? The lift from about 15 fucking years. There's one thing you can do. Well, I'll try to end. I love bounty bars. Have you got a bounty bar? Of course I've got a good bounty bar. What is it about the bounty bar that I like? Oh, God, no, look at this. I can't resist the taste of paradise. That's right. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Has it come around? It's not coming around. It's not coming around. It's one thing when it's not set on me. Try it out, mate. I'll try it with you, man. It's coming around. Oh, come on. I tell you, brother, I can't wear this much longer. Ah, I can't take this much longer. Like dim the lights, this will get the bastard up. Oh, I'm fucking hell, man. It's two hours to opening time at Barron's nightclub, and the burglar alarm has been activated. Club owner Paul Barron arrives to investigate. We don't know what set it off at this precise moment in time, but my brother Tony's on his way, so we should be able to sort you out then. Right, let's get this door open. Right, got it. Right. We've seen stuff in it. Got it stuck in it. That's it, right. Let's do it again now. <laughs> right, I've got the alarm key here, which I've recently had gold plated at Timpsons in the arcade, and I must say, the tolerances on this key are absolutely minimal. Let's get this fella turned off. It's just a bit of a struggle there. Let me <coughs> replace my foot. And there we are. We're off. <laughs> That's OK, my brother. I hope you're well. Thank you very much. Now, come on, we must search premises for intruder. Right, OK. Come quickly. Good idea. Perhaps you'll get longer chain, maybe. Do you know what? I'll bear that in mind, Tony. You may have a point there. Oh, After oh, a quick search of the club, it appears to have been a false alarm. It's a big night at Barron's nightclub, as Kinky John is showcasing his new boy band, Mandate. <laughs> Final rehearsals are underway. I got so much to give you. I also want to live with you. I got so much time for you. I want to drink some wine with you. I got smoked salmon in the fridge for you. It must seem like a dream to you. Before I ran Barron's nightclub, I was in the SAS. Forty years I spent in the SAS. In fact, we led the raid on Entep, which was a great success. Walked away from that one smiling. And when I finally left the SAS, which was a very sad day, I received numerous presents from my staff sergeant. Lovely fella. Most of them were gold. 
Are you a family man? I'm not married as yet. I have been married before to two women who are very big stars. I can't say who they are for obvious security reasons. But I'm soon to be married to Superintendent Jane Tennyson from Primal Scream. Touch! Every other day you'll Turn be touching touch. me And before you know it, baby Together We'll be touching now I'll take the people do not realise that Mr. Barron, Mr. Paul Barron, sex symbol superstar, that he, his TV repair is what he was apprenticeship. <laughs> for 40 years, he was repairing TVs for Wii Diffusion. He had bad name in business for using shoddy cables and spray painting his name on inside of telly. <laughs> he would remove back of telly and write, you are a bastard, to give them a shock when they return to inspect her work. OK, boys, take a rest. That was beautiful. Hey, how about that? They are mandate, and they're aged between 18 and 19 years of age, and tonight is their first debut live performance. How about that? I swear on my neck and my lips. I swear, ladies and gentlemen, these guys are going places big time. They are not manufactured, and ladies, the hormones are doing them damage. You gotta give them some respect for that. I swear, within one month, they will be on the big breakfast. If not, I will personally eat my own ass. All right, Pete. Yeah? Now, Mr. Barron's gonna be here tonight, be on your best for you. Don't embarrass the club in front of Bob Mr. Bob Barron's a quack! You wouldn't say that if he was here, would you? Oh, no! Well, why'd you say it here? I'd have said out. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. You called him a quack. A quack, quack like a duck. If I, uh, yeah, I said, yeah. If I it, it shit yourself, I told him you'd said it, wouldn't you? I know. Well, don't say it, then. Right, I won't. Well, don't. I won't say it anymore. Quack, no. quack. You just said it again. I know. All right, I'm going to tell him in this <laughs> Right, right. Take Are it we? back. Take it back, then. Paul Barron's not a duck. All oh, right, that's better. All oh, right, you're clear about everything. You sure what you're doing? I want a good night tonight. Yeah, All right, it's a big night. Anything. Come on, get to it. It's 7:30 p.m. and the crowds are already starting to arrive at Barron's. Luckily. Mandate are going down a storm with staff and punters alike. I like bands like this. I'd like to go and see bands like this more often. Well, you should do them. Right, I will then. Thanks to Mandate, things are looking up for Baron's nightclub. And Tony tries to capitalise on their success. Hello. It's a big breakfast. Here's Tony Bowen, brother of superstar Paul Bowen. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'm not willing to hold because I am sit, sitting on the best top boy band in the north of England are offering their services for exclusive for Mr. Johnny Vaughan on Big Breakfast. <laughs> right, it's an answering machine. Next week on The Club, Paul and Tony confront a mysterious intruder. It's a good spot to bury it then. What, the treasure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's do it here, yeah? Yeah? Okay, put that right. Ah! 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 What's happened? Oh! I th oh, just done something to my wrist. What do you mean? Well, I think it may be fractured. Yeah? <laughs> Is it a break? Fracture? Well, break. it may be broken and that'll be fractured. I just don't know. Well, it'd be better if it was a break, wouldn't it? Well, well look, I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just shift this then, you all right? If you could, yeah. OK. Look. Are you ah! Right? Ooh, dear. Ah! Oh, dear. Oh, ah! What happened then? It's my shoulder, Vic. What happened? I think I've dis dislocated it, I think. Oh. It's really sharp. Oh, isn't that terrible? Do all that, but anyway, how's your wrist, anyway? Well, this, I'm well about you know, this. I'm... I'm you know, I think it's probably broken. You still think it's a break, yeah? I think it probably is, yeah. Okay. Are you going to be all right to bury this, or...? Yeah, shall I, um... Will you get the spade? If you're sure. Yeah. I'll dig. Yeah, I hope it's yeah. all right, then. Yeah, OK. Well, I think, it, you know, I'll try. Ah! <laughs> I think I've gone blind, Rick. Hopefully it's temporary. But it very, very well may be perm permanent. <laughs> No, you like to point yeah. that out as well. Anyway, I'll just dig the hole. Okay. 
Oh, what's happened? What's oh. happened? What's happened? What's well, happened? I don't know. I was probably sped and I hit something. I don't know, a stone or something like that. But I heard the snap and I think I broke this wrist. <laughs> is, it the, is it the same one? No, it's the other one. Oh no! And do you know what else, Bob? What? I had a heart attack as well. Oh no! <laughs> Well, as you know, he's me going on about my worries. How's that shoulder of yours? Oh, that's all right, but I think, uh, I think I've lost my sense of smell. <laughs> what was that? I think I've lost my sense of smell. What is it? Oh, sorry, I've gone deaf. <laughs> oh, they can't hear me. Waters are just broke. Oh. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm going to phone a... I'm going to phone a taxi. All right? Why don't you phone a taxi? <laughs> We could be here some time, you know. Did you say something? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Get your lighter out. I'm afraid we're quite badly burnt. <laughs> I'm having that. What is it? It's a ship's engine. Yeah, I will and get it then. It's too heavy for me. That's frustrating. That's, that is frustrating. You sure you want it? I really think we should have it. Yeah. He asked these lads, not they? Lads! Lads! <laughs> lads! 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 Can you help us with this machinery? Sure you want it? Yeah, it's positive he wants it. He's going to put it in his attic. With all the other things. Nice one. <laughs> Thanks, lads. That's great. Da, da, da. 
da, 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 da. <laughs> Man has learnt to keep his home clean. Unfortunately, animals haven't, which can make it very perilous going away for holiday for a fortnight or two and leaving your house empty. For instance, next door's Dulux dog could creep into your home whilst you're away and creep into your vegetable rack and leave dog dirt on your onions. <laughs> And what about this? Occasionally, and it can happen, a mole can tunnel up through your half and blow its brains out in your coal scuttle. <laughs> that's right. It can happen. And that's why man has learnt to keep cleaning products in his home. <laughs> First up, the aerosols. Ah, yes, the aerosols that we ah. use to clean our tableaus with. All right, Vic, that's all the work there. Fighting cold winds of the British winter approach. They migrate south to Montego Bay, the lovely pineapple drink centre of the world, where they can relax under the blue, blue sea and the lovely warm sun and the liquor fishes swimming in the sea. Oi, oi, oi! Special guest is. All oh, right. Ah, is it Lenny Henry? Ah, <laughs> uh, right, is it? Ah, uh, tube of refreshers. No. no, it's a sweet, isn't it? That's a sweet. All right. Well, you didn't get it, but never mind. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's special guest is Caprice. Caprice. It's Caprice. It's Caprice. She beautiful. Oh, she beautiful. All right, get it. Oh, oh, you look lovely. She's beautiful. You look lovely, Lally. Ah, she's like a seabird hovering over the train. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you guys always dress like this? Yes, we yes. do. Do you like oh, it? Charming. Before we start the questioning or not start, we'd like to warm up the audience and the guests with a little explosion. Yes. So, David, let's have an explosion. We're really laughing up things now by creating a little explosion, Caprice. I hope you like explosion. You get things off to a nice little bang. <laughs> right, it's just the way. Oh, 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 I like it. Caprice. <laughs> <laughs> After a long day being photographed, do you go home and have a nice long relaxing pool? <laughs> Good question. It looks like she does. Next last... question. <laughs> Good friends, do you have a regular boyfriend or a man who visits you when you require it? <laughs> uh, no regular boyfriend and no man that visits me regularly. Well, if oh, you should I require know. one, Donald is available. <laughs> if you were booking a clown for your birthday, would you choose Mr Crumblebottom from High? Um, Mr. Mingemuncher from Sunday. 
Så drider kvarven. Så mange er på præsyner. Number two. Vi <laughs> står vi. Would you put you off if you could see? <laughs> Would it put you off if you could see one of the photographer's balls? <laughs> If the photographer's one of his balls was hanging out of his shop. No, actually, it wouldn't. Right, actually, too, uh, was that? Who did not put you off? No. Right. Oh, God, yes! Oh! Oh! me! <laughs> David, what are you doing? I'm just holding out. <laughs> Mr. Rosie Parker! Caprice, <laughs> you are within inches of the staring eye of a Yorkshire Terrier and it is snapping at your face. What's all that about then? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you just ask me that question one more time? <laughs> Caprice, we'd like to offer you this opportunity to see if you'd like to ask us anything. I would like to ask you, where did you get your shoes? Oh, well, my shoes are of sentimental value, as they were offered to me by the King of Spain in retribution for me attacking his wife with a fish slice. <laughs> David, that's not true. I know. What's a good story? It's a very exciting, <laughs> very exciting story. Caprice. <laughs> a dwarf who is quite unknown to you is unravelling a thread from your skirt, making it shorten. Do you chastise him or pat him on his head and give him a Chelsea bun? <laughs> pat him on his head. I give him a Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea bun? Yeah. He's a lucky, lucky dwarf. <laughs> Where I live, the Chelsea bun is considered de rigueur. <laughs> Where I live, it is considered the bête noir. <laughs> <laughs> no! Caprice, the cry goes out. Leave the house, gas leak. <laughs> But you are starkers. <laughs> Do you run out nude or cover your intimacy with a couple of sugar puffs? <laughs> I run out nude. Right. <laughs> no, please, gas leak. <laughs> for being our guest on start. Oh. We asked our questions anyway. Wait, where are you guys going? <laughs> What do I do now? Wait, come back! Hello?